human law going to, to tech and being replaced by code? Essentially? So I hope not. So I'm joined today by Angela Walsh. Angela, you have an impressive CV. You are an associate professor at St Mary's University School of Law. You've also been quoted in the Financial Times and been nominated for Blockchain Person of the Year in 2015. Yes, yes. Yes, and you are here in town in Edinburgh for Scotchain. I did my research and a lot of your work is on the claim that blockchain can replace um, human law and governance with code, essentially. This might be true from a technology standpoint, but what does that mean for the real world? Sure. So that is one of the big issues that's come up with blockchain technology is the idea that by moving to these systems, we can somehow get away from you know, our human frailties and our human flaws, mm-hmm. that we don't have to trust people anymore to, to run things. Okay, the, the technology will do it. I'm very skeptical of that claim because um, I think that at the end of the day, you still do have people running things. So in blockchain systems, the public blockchain ones, which are the ones that have the strongest messaging out there that people are not doing anything, right? Mm -hmm. Um, They have the core developers, definitely, the software developers, the team of the the key group of software developers who makes decisions about what ends up in the code, how the code should reflect certain um, principles, what those principles are. They make important decisions. The mining networks, the validation networks in these systems make important decisions. Mm -hmm. And I think by not acknowledging the power that people are exercising, you actually end up in kind of a bad position because power that is not acknowledged ends up being unchecked and undefined. And you are not then entering a world where humans are not exercising power and code is. You're entering a world where people are being power players but no one's acknowledging it. So does that not kind of defeat the purpose of these public networks? It kind of does. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The question is whether sort of undefined governance is a core feature of Mm -hmm. these technologies and whether if you put in more structured governance that they lose their specialness and become just like the rest of the world. I think they are risky for essentially anything really important to society. So for things of scale. Okay? Which, which is what all the conversations about blockchain and the application of blockchain are. They're really important, yes. crucial processes. Exactly. So we're talking about it um, being used for important processes like, you know, transactions in our financial system, um, voting, mm-hmm. um, healthcare records, all kinds of different things, right? All of these are very important social systems. So we need to be thinking about the underlying characteristics of the technology and whether we're okay with those being used for important practices in our society. So how do you propose we push for change in regulation to allow for innovations like blockchain technology? The difficulties associated with it are figuring out Um, just what this innovation is and where all of its effects can be. Okay, so there's an education process for the people developing the technology, um, the business community to figure out how they might use the technology, and then the regulators to understand it and see where all the ripples might be. If the technology does um, dictate that there really should be a change in the regulatory regime, you know, the ways I would do it are um, educating regulators about exactly why, right, yeah. and, you, and making the clearest case that you can, um, and it, and doing so in a way that acknowledges both the pros and cons of um, of your approach, because you're seen much more credibly if uh, you do. So- right.